Um, my name is Eddie, and uh, I'm here today to talk to you about the violin. Uh, so the history of the violin. Um, the, early, the earliest sightings of the violin were uh, in the 1530s, and it was just in uh, photographs. And they would just see a picture of the violin with three strings, like that's it, and you know as well as the bow. And it was uh, known as the fiddle for the longest time, and still is called the fiddle to this day. Um, it is part of the stringed instrument family, so the viola, the violin, cello, guitar, bass, anything. Um, it was fully modernized. Oh wait, okay, let's see. Um, it was, uh, they started actually seeing it in person in the 1600s, and that's when it was known as the, the baroque, and uh, it was like this really flat looking, it, I mean, it still sounded really good, but it just wasn't up to perfection. So uh, they fully modernized it in the late 1800s. Um, the next picture I have some modifications that they've done. Um, pretty much when it was modernized, um, it led to everybody else starting to learn how to play it because in the early 1600s, it was just like royalty and you would pay lots of money to go see it at concerts and yeah. Um, so this is the modern violin today right here. This is what it looks like. Um, the bar, okay, this is the old one. Uh, they changed a couple things. They, this used to be really like thick on top, so they made it a lot smaller. Um, they changed the angle of the strings because uh, they wanted to support it better because, I don't know, they just wanted it to better support. Uh, they made the bridge up higher. They made uh, the neck and the bottom piece to hold a lot thicker. And uh, this right here is the electric violin. It's the latest thing now. It's uh, a lot simpler to play. Um, Antonio Stradivari, he was the most famous violin maker in the world. Um, he was born in 1766 and he made a total of 1,100 instruments. And uh, to this day, 616 of them remain. And uh, the highest violin sold for $16 million. Um, anatomy of the violin. Okay, so we'll start right here. Uh, the scroll, the scroll is just uh, meant for detail and just for looks. The peg box, uh, this is the peg box right here. It holds these. And the pegs are what hold uh, the strings in place. So they need to uh, like be tight because if you mess them at all, like twist it away, the string will just shoot right out. And yeah, it's painful sometimes. Uh, the neck and the fingerboard, the neck is just this area right here. And the fingerboard is the rest. It's, uh, it gives you a place to rest your fingers on the strings to make the, the notes. And the strings, we have G, D, A, and E. Um, the body, and obviously this is most of it's for design. Um, the F holes, the, the F holes are what uh, help project the sound from the inside of the instrument. Inside, uh, they have a brass bar that goes from about right here, and they have a sound post about right there. Um, they help the vibration from the top and the bottom of the instrument to vibrate throughout it all and throughout the holes to make the really nice sound. Um, along with the rest, we have the tail post. This little part right here is the tail post. It pretty much holds everything in place. Uh, if you were to take it out, it kind of just falls apart. <laughs> um, then you have a chin and shoulder rest. Uh, the shoulder rest, it just depends on uh, if you're left-handed or right-handed. It can be placed on both sides. And they have a chin rest, a shoulder rest as well that's underneath that clamps right here and right here, and it just rests on your shoulder. And then we have uh, the bow. Um, the horse hairs are made out of about 200 horse hairs. It's really incredible. And they have the frog. This is where you're supposed to uh, get the good grip on and be able to hold on properly. Um, another fact is uh, the strings in the 1600s used to be made out of uh, pig intestines. Really gross, yeah. <laughs> um, this right here is the most common basic uh, used scale of the violin. And there's Tons and tons. For each note, there's pretty much a, you can make a separate scale for it. Um, these four notes right here are the G string, the first lowest one, 
and we have the D and the A and the E. The E is the, the newest one. It was added in the 1700s. So really neat. Uh, the coolest thing about uh, the scales are for each note, there can be a minor and a major. So when you're playing the notes on the string, you have to be really careful of where you're setting it because if you move your finger like just a slightly inch like closer, it's a different note. And that applies for everything. So there's three notes for this, three notes for that, for everything. And they all just they have a big role in each other. Um, I had some videos, but I don't have them up right now. And 